Hey everyone, I'm Liz with Premier Yarns, and I want to say thank you to all of you for joining me today on this Saturday, um, and thanks to Michaels for hosting this class. If you want to pop in the chat where you are um, joining us from, that would be really cool. I am here in Louisville, Kentucky, um, and it's a nice sunny day out. Um, okay, so we've got... Good. I can see the chat. Sometimes I'm concerned that I can't see the chat, but I'm good to go today. If you have any questions while I'm going through all of this, there's kind of a lot to go through. Uh, just pop it in the chat and I will do my best to get to you. There's Tiffany from Seattle and we have some people from Monterey, Denise and Kelly, Las Vegas. Hey, everyone. So glad to see you guys. Okay, let me just give a quick intro of what we're working on. Today, I'm doing the bunny. Um, if you were with me, um, the other cu couple classes I did, I did the fox. So if you want to see the fox, if you missed it, or the chick, uh, you can grab those classes and the free patterns on the Michael's YouTube channel. So the, the recorded video is there on the YouTube channel and the free pattern is in the link in the description. You should have your pattern for the bunny for today's class. I'm just gonna kind of go over it um, as much as I can. And next time I'm doing the koala. So if you wanna join me for him, he's gonna be in two weeks, I believe. So you can sign up for that one too. Before I go right in, I just want to make a quick like sort of note about these guys. So see, I did the fox in the chenille uh, home slim. So this is the loops and threads chenille home slim, but you can also do the same exact pattern in a smaller um, a worsted weight yarn, which is my um, craft smart. So you can do the same exact pattern. You're just gonna get obviously a bigger guy if you use the chenille home slim. So that's just a note. You don't have to really worry about the gauge too much because um, it's just a toy. It's not like a sweater or something like that. Um, so yeah, if you wanna use a different yarn, feel free to do that. Just know that with amigurumi, we usually use a smaller hook than is recommended on the yarn. So if the yarn tells you use like a six millimeter, go down smaller because you want your stitches to be smaller and closer together so you don't have too much holes in your work. Okay, so let me go ahead and switch my view so I can tell you what we're using today. I don't want to do that. I'm using my uh, six and a half millimeter hook. Okay, that's a little bit smaller than what the yarn recommends, which I think they recommend an eight. And like I said, for this, you don't have to worry about gauge too much. If everyone else can hear me, um, I'll try to keep my voice so it, uh, you know, so everybody can hear. But if you can't hear anything, check and see if uh, your computer, yeah, if your computer audio is off. Okay. Oh, is Chanel having? Oh, I think Chanel's answering her. Okay. So Chanel Home Slim. This is a bulky weight. It is textured. So you can see it's got lots of like sort of fuzz around it. Um, so it makes your amigurumi nice and soft and squishy. And this color is, I think, rose. I want to say this one is rose. Yeah, rose. And then I used a little bit of the black for some detail in the face and a little bit of white for the nose. So let's start with the body. When you go to, oh yeah, and of course you got your scissors and your stitch markers. Don't forget those. Very, very important when you're doing amigurumi because we're working in continuous rounds. So we have to mark the beginning um, of our, or the end of our rounds, but I'll show you that now. Okay. I'm gonna start off with the magic ring. That's probably the hardest thing we're gonna do for the whole class. So once you get this down, the rest is gonna be easy. And what I can do is I can show you how to do it once with the smooth worsted weight acrylic yarn, and then we'll do it with the textured yarn because it's a little bit different. The technique's the same, but it, you know, it, the feel of it and the look of it is a bit different. So I'm gonna take the end of my yarn the tail um, and I'm going to just lay it over like the palm of my hand like this 
And then this part, I'm gonna wrap it to the back, right? And then I kind of grab this to secure it with these two fingers and then bring that yarn towards me and then over those two fingers and so that it crosses over. So it crosses like that. And then just rotate my hand and I grab that piece to secure it. So now I have this strand and this strand. And this strand is kind of over this strand. So then I wanna put my hook under the first one and then grab the second one. Yes, I'll do, I'll do this a couple of times because like I said, this is the hardest. Um, once you get done, once you get this down, it's smooth sailing, but I'll do it a couple of times and I'll do it with the other yarn too. So under and then over so I can grab this one with my hook. Oops. And then pull that through. And then as I pull it through, I just kind of rotate. And now I have this loop on the hook and I can take this, take these fingers out and I have a little ring here, right? So then you grab your working and then you can make your first chain. So chain one. And now I have this ring right here. I can just begin working right into that ring with my first single crochet. So you're gonna go into the ring, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then yarn over and pull through those loops to make the single crochet. Okay, let me do it one more time. A couple more times, I'll do it a couple more times because I'm gonna do it with the other yarn. Okay, so lay the tail end over your palm like this, wrap it around those two fingers, cross it over, and then I grab that with my pinky to secure it. I go under the first one and over the second one, and pull that through below. So it's going under this strand, pull it through. And then you have that loop on your hook, sort of a loop on your hook, okay? Then you can let go, hold on to the, to the ring, chain one and single crochet. And then once you get a few single crochets in there, you just take this tail end and you pull that and that tightens the ring. But let me do it with the pink yarn. Okay, with this yarn is thicker, so I'm using my bigger hook. I'm using my six and a half millimeter. Okay, so over the palm, wrap it, pull it, like not pull it, but wrap it around your finger towards you and then cross it over. Grab that to hold on to it. Now you see how I have my yarn like crossed over here. So then you just go under the first strand and then hook the second strand. Pull that through. Now you have the loop and you have the ring made so you can just let go. Grab your working yarn to start working and then make a chain one, which is yarn over, pull through. Okay, so if we start, has everyone got that? <laughs> I know it's tough. Sometimes you have to, um, put my chat on my phone. Sometimes you have to do it a few times. Okay. Sometimes you have to practice it a few times to get it. So let's do a quick watch. So over the palm, wrap around those two fingers. Grab that and then you just go under and over to pull it through. And there's your ring, okay? So if I look at my pattern, we're starting with the body and it says with the main color, which is my rose, we are gonna make a magic ring and we just did that, okay? So now you just want to start working the rounds. Into the magic ring, you're gonna work six single crochets. So let's do that now. And I'm gonna go directly into that ring. Don't worry about this little tail, you can work right over it, okay? So chain one, into the ring, <laughs> go in. It's the, that magic ring, it takes, it takes some time, you have to practice it. Okay, yarn over, into the ring, yarn over, pull up a loop. Now I have one, two loops on my hook. Gonna yarn over again and 
pull that through the two loops, and then I have a single crochet. And we need six of those. So you're going to go into the ring, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops. Into the ring, yarn over, two loops on the hook, yarn over again, pull through two loops. Into the ring, yarn over, pull through two loops. Okay, Cindy, you want to see the first step one more time? Magic ring, right? <laughs> yeah, you do need to know how to do this to proceed on. So take your tail, put it over your palm, wrap it around towards you. So you're just wrapping it around those two fingers, okay? You make like a little X. Grab it with your pinky just to secure it. Under the first strand and then over the second strand to pull it through. And now you have that loop on your hook that you've pulled through. Now, in order for me to continue crocheting, I have to let go of this because I need these fingers, right? So I just gently pull those fingers out so I can grab my tail here or grab my working yarn. This is the working yarn. And then you have to get your placement like you do. This is how I hold my yarn and hold on to this. Okay, this is how you know you hold your yarn to crochet. You can hold yours however you want. This is just how I hold mine. And now I'm going to start my crocheting. Okay, so first we start with a chain, yarn over, pull through the loop on the hook. That's a chain one. And now we start with our single crochets into the ring, insert into the ring, yarn over, pull up a loop, one, two loops on the hook. Yarn over, pull through two. That's one single crochet. Insert, yarn over, pull up a loop, pull through two loops. That's two single crochets. See, I'm working right over the tail. That's okay because I can tighten it later. Insert into the ring. Yarn over, two loops on the hook. Yarn over, pull through two. And then we need six of those, right? So I have one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. And I need one more. And this is the challenge with working uh, with this textured yarn. It's It can be difficult to visualize where your stitches are. So if we say, okay, I, I need to count my stitches now to make sure I'm on the right track. You have a stitch here, it looks like a V. You have a front loop and a back loop. So this is one single crochet. This is another single crochet. This is another one. And it can be hard to see because there's so much like fuzz around the yarn that it kind of blends in with everything but I can see that I have six single crochets into that I worked into this ring. And that's what I wanna do for round one. Okay, and then it says dash six single crochet. That means that's how many you should have at the end. Do not join, begin working in continuous rounds. So now we wanna just work around and around and around and we don't wanna do any kind of joining. But in order to do that, we have to always mark this stitch. Otherwise, um, like you won't know where you started and where you ended for each round. And you, that's very important. So let me just take this tail that I worked over and I'm gonna pull it. So I close my ring and I have just a little circle now. Now you can mark your first stitch. I prefer to mark my last stitch. It's just the way I like to do it, but you can do it either way. So you take your little marker Pop it in there under both loops and then lock it, okay? Now we're gonna go on to round two and you just need to do two single crochet in each single crochet. So I am increasing. This is my first single crochet right here. So I'm gonna place my hook under both of those loops. So insert it and you can see I'm going under the front loop, which is here and the, the front loop here 
in the back loop there. I'm going under both of those loops. You're always gonna go under both loops unless the pattern says otherwise. Yarn over, pull through. Now I have two loops on the hook and I'm gonna yarn over and pull through those two. Now I need to work another stitch into that same stitch where you just made that single crochet. So you go under the same two loops because we're increasing here. Yarn over, pull it through, yarn over, pull through two loops. And I know this is fast if you're begin if a beginner, um, but you know, if you want to just kind of watch and then go ahead and watch the uh, recorded video, you can watch that as many times as you need to. Um, you know, it just takes practice like everything else. Okay, here's my next single crochet. Oh, and it might be helpful. Um, yeah, magic <laughs> ring takes a lot of practice. It might be helpful if you're really just starting out to start with this guy that I did. Start with this class with the chick because it's only a few shapes and we're working with the smooth yarn, which is easier to see the stitches. So you might want to start out with that one. That might be helpful too. Okay, so I'm going under my next single crochet. Yeah, so you want me to do the, Elma says, can you do that again? So I'm gonna do a bunch of these single crochets. So you'll, you'll see that. So here we go, I'm going under two loops, yarn over, pull through. I'm doing the same thing over and over basically. These are all single crochet stitches. So you're gonna see these a lot and then yarn over, pull through two. So that was the first one. Now remember I, I'm increasing. So I need to put um, my next stitch into the same stitch. Okay, insert, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through those two loops. Okay, so now you have two single crochets in there. Here's my next stitch. See, so here's the loop and the loop. You're gonna go under both loops yarn over, pull through, two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through those two. And now you wanna do another one into that same space. So I'm going right into where I just came out of. Yarn over, pull through two. Here's your next stitch here. Insert, yarn over, pull through two. Insert, yarn over, pull through two. Here's your next stitch. One, two, and now here's my uh, last stitch. And you know that that's your last stitch because you have it marked. So after you do the two single crochets in this last stitch, you can take that out. One and two. Okay, Elma, hold on a second, Elma. I'm gonna, I'm gonna address that. And now I have my, those last two stitches I worked. And I want to put that marker in the very last stitch that I made because we need to mark every single round. Okay, so now here I'm complete. I've completed round two. And um, I want to count to make sure I have the right number of stitches. So let's just count from, from the last one because it's marked. One, two, three, four, five, six seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. So I have 12 stitches at the end of round two. And according to my pattern, uh, I should have 12 single crochets, okay? So round two, you should end with 12 single crochets. And that's what we ended with. So we know we're on the right track. Okay, so Elma says your yarn ripped when you tightened it. So this chenille yarn, the way they make it is um, they have like a thread. Watch, watch, what I, watch when I do this, see? There's a thread here. And then what they do is they put this texture fuzz around that thread. Um, so when you go like this, it just comes right off. Like you could just take it right off. When you crochet with it, as you can see, because I went and did these rounds with no problem, it'll crochet beautifully, it won't fall apart. But when you start like it going, doing something like this where you're pulling it, 
Um, or like you take a thread and you try to work through um, like embroider with it or something like that, it's gonna just sort of, these strands are gonna fall, they're gonna fall apart and it might rip too if you pull it too tight. So you just have to be gentle with it. Um, it's just the nature of how they make it. It's the only way you can get that sort of fuzziness. So the best thing to do is just, you know, once you have like your sort of rhythm and your gauge going, you, you'll you see, it'll come out like mine, like, you know, where you can do the whole thing and you won't have any trouble with it ripping or whatever. But if you're kind of tightening too much, if you don't have your gauge down properly, like your tension, you might have some problems with that. So that's why I really just recommend um, starting out with these worsted weight guys because you won't have that problem with that yarn. And that's just the nature of it. You know, that's just the way it's made to make it nice and fuzzy and soft. But anytime you see anyone who's um, teaching crochet, they will always recommend you start with a smooth worsted weight yarn in a light color, right? So if you use something really dark, it's gonna be hard to see your stitches. If you use something really textured, uh, the fluff is going to kind of, it's going to be hard to see your stitches there too. And you really need to be able to visualize those so you know where to work into, okay? So just practice and you can do the bunny. You can do any of the patterns. Just use a different yarn. Just, you know, if you're really having too much trouble with it, just use a different yarn until you get your tension down. Um, and that just comes with practice. Once you get your tension down, you'll have no problem with it. Okay, I hope that helps. All right, so we are on to round three. And now I see I have single crochet in the next single crochet and then two single crochet in the next single crochet. And then it just tells me to repeat from the star around. So let me show you what that looks like. So first I'm gonna go in my next stitch. I know this is my last stitch because I've marked it. This is my next stitch right here. So single crochet. And then it says two single crochet in the next single crochet. So this is just like what we did before, we're gonna increase. So one and two. And then single crochet into this one. And then increase in this one. So one and two. And when I say increase, that just means you're working two stitches into one stitch and single crochet in this one, and two single crochet in this one. And of course your pattern's always gonna tell you when you need to increase, when you need to decrease, when you need to just work even, which means one stitch in, into one stitch. Uh, what did I just do two there? Single crochet, and then increase. So one, two, and then a single crochet, and then an increase. So one, two, and you see I'm, I'm doing the same stitches. It's very repetitive. These are all single crochets. No other stitch is involved here. You're just working in rounds as opposed to working in rows where you turn your work. Okay, now I'm at my last stitch and you wanna put two into that last stitch. Okay, and then don't forget to mark that, mark the last stitch. And now you can count again to make sure you're on the right track. So I have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. See how it can be really hard to to differentiate when you're counting, like, wait, is that one stitch or two stitches? It can be really hard with this fuzzy yarn. So that's why I say practice with the smooth yarn. You'll be able to see the stitches better. So I had 18 and my powder tells me I was supposed to end round three with 18. So you know you're on the right track. Let's just do a couple more rounds so you can just get the idea. And a lot of the pattern is this, working around and around, making it bigger, then making it smaller. And it's gonna follow the same pattern. So you're gonna be like, okay, now I'm gonna work um, 
in the next two single crochets, and then I'm going to increase. And then for the round after that, you're going to go single crochet in the next three, and then increase single crochet in the next four, and then increase. So see, it follows a pattern too. So we're in round four, single crochet in the next two. So here's one. So I just put one single crochet and then one single crochet in the next one. So I did single crochet in the next two, and then I'm gonna do two single crochets in this one. And of course you just repeat from star around, okay? So single crochet in the next two, that's one and two, and then two single crochets into this one. Single crochet in the next two, that's one and two, and then two single crochets in this one. Single crochet in the next two, one and two, and then two single crochets in this one. One, two. Single crochet in the next two. You see, I'm just <laughs> repeating myself, you guys. It gets very repetitive. But I know you can get this. You probably just need to start with a worse, with a smooth yarn if you're having trouble. And I'm gonna do single crochet in the next two. And now my last stitch. I put two single crochets in there. So notice how with the end of each round, I am um, ending with an, inc an increase. So then you, that'll be another kind of clue that you're on the right track. And now at this point, you should have like a nice flat circle. Um, if your circle is not nice and flat, if it's like curling, if it's curling up a little bit, that's normal. Like see, it's curling a tiny bit, that's normal. But if it's curling up a lot, you probably missed a stitch somewhere. Or if it's like ruffling, um, on the edges or ruffling, you probably put too many stitches somewhere. So you should have a nice flat circle at this point, okay? Let's just do one more round and then we're gonna move on to some of the other pieces because this is probably, you know, just like the starting off point. Okay, so rounds, what am I on? I'm round, I'm on round five. So you want to single crochet in the next three and then two single crochet. Basically what we just did, but you're doing three single crochets before you do that increase, right? So one, two, three single crochets, and then your increase. So one and two, okay? One, two, three single crochets, and then your increase in the next stitch. One, two, three single crochets, and you're gonna increase in the next stitch. One, two, three, and increase. And see, you can see that I'm not having any trouble with, um, with the yarn, like with the fuzzies falling off, because it's really made to like knit or crochet. Um, don't, <laughs> Don't ever try to like weave with it. Like I, I made that mistake once I tried to make like a, a woven um, like picture, whatever they're called, like a tapestry. And you know how you have like these, um, it's like yarn or like cotton yarn. And then you weave in and out of it like this. Um, like every time I would weave through, it would just, pull all those fuzzies right off. So it's really made for like knitting or crocheting. Um, <laughs> it, it does tend to, when you do like, like a movement like this, it's gonna kind of pull those fuzzies off. But as you can see, nothing's happening when I'm just crocheting at my normal tension. 
Now this is my last stitch. So remember on that last stitch, you work your increase. So two single crochets into your last stitch. And don't forget to put your marker back. Okay, nice flat circle. Um, now you're gonna continue on like that for like up to round 10. And you're gonna go, you know, increase the number of stitches that you do before the increase will increase with each round. So of course, the number of stitches around is going to be um, increased as well. So with each round, you'll increase by six stitches. So you can see, and of course you have your stitch count here. So you'll have 30, 42, 48. So if you ever forget which round you're on or just kind of like it's looking kind of funky and you're like, what's going on here? Just count your stitches and see if you're on the right track. If you're not, if you don't, if you have too many or if you have too few, just pull that back to where your marker is and start over again where you need to be, okay? All right, so that is the bottom. Now what happens with the bottom is, I'm gonna show you this bunny. This is where I started the magic ring. And then I just increase and increase and increase. And at some point, if I keep increasing like that, that flat circle will just expand and expand, but it'll still be a flat circle. So at some point you need to stop increasing and you need to start working even so you get from a flat circle to a sphere shape, right? So let's say, let's pretend we're at, because I can't, we won't have time to go through everything. Let's pretend we are at the point where we need to stop increasing and we need to start working even, okay? And that's at round 11. So at round 11, it says single crochet in each single crochet. So let's pretend we're at round 11. So I can show you what happens when you stop um, increasing. So Sandy asks, are the ear pieces separate? Yeah, all the pieces are separate. So basically you're just making like a, like a um a sphere like this and then you're going to stuff that and then you're going to make the two ears and the two paws and i'm going to show you how to do that too and then once you make the ears and the paws i'm just going to sew those on and add the embroidery for the eyes and the nose okay so let's pretend we've made our circle as big as we want it to be and we want to now make it into um, a sphere so we're gonna just work one single crochet into each single crochet around. So single crochet. I'm no longer increasing. I'm working even, which is one to one. So one stitch into each stitch. And you still need to keep your stitches marked at this point too. I'm using thin yarn. It, mine is kind of, Smaller, yeah, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be much smaller, and that's what I showed you guys with the fox. So see how I how I made the bigger fox with the chenille yarn, and then I made this fox with the smooth yarn. But that's perfectly okay with um, amigurumi. Like that's the beauty of it. You don't have to worry about, you know, you can substitute any yarn that you want with the same exact pattern. You don't have to change the pattern at all. Um, you just have to change your hook size, just use a smaller hook than the, than the yarn recommends. But you know, of course your piece is gonna come out smaller, which is fine. You just don't try to do that if you're making like a hat or a sweater or some gloves that need to fit. <laughs> okay, so I'm making a single crochet into each of these single crochets. And look, you can see already that my piece is starting to sort of curl up because I'm not increasing around that um, area anymore. So once you stop increasing, it's gonna just start to take a shape of a, of a circle. And then at the top of the circle, okay, so let's say I put one single crochet into each of these single crochets, right? And then, that circle is going to start coming up like this. 
it's going to start coming up like this. Now, what will happen if I just keep working single crochets around, around, around? It'll just make a tube, like a big, long tube. You can go forever, but you'll just have a tube. So at some point, you need to start decreasing to bring that shape back like this, right? Like a circle. So you started small, you expanded out, then you worked even, and then you have to decrease to come in like that. So what I want to show you is how to decrease so that way we can move, I'm um, just keeping track of time too. So that way we can move on to the um, ears and the paws, okay? So I worked even, and you're gonna do that according to the pattern for this many rounds, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, for six rounds. So rounds 11 through 16, you're just gonna work one single crochet in each stitch. And what I like to do is I'll just, um, say okay around 11 and then I'll put like a check mark or put 11, 12. I'll just write on my pattern so I can keep track of how many even rounds I made because you could lose track of that. So just write 11, 12, 13, 14 and then you know you have all your even rounds. So once you have all your even rounds you want to start to decrease. So you can see here in the pattern it says single crochet in the next eight single crochet and then invisible decrease. So I want to show you how to do an invisible decrease. First, let me count and see how many stitches I have here. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, through all of these, but it's the same thing. It's like the same technique. So um, I'm showing you all the techniques you need to know. I just can't go row by row because we'll be we'll be here too long, right? So if I have um, 30, what I want to do is single crochet in the next three single crochets, and then invisible decrease to bring me down to 24. Okay, but of course you're going to go round by round according to the pattern. But I just wanna show you how to do that invisible decrease because that's a little tricky. Okay, so let's say I'm working through my pattern and you wanna go single crochet in the next three stitches. So that's one, two, and three. And now at this point you need to decrease. So let's take a look at these two stitches here. I have stitch right here and I have a stitch right here and what we need to do is make these two stitches one okay so we're, we're going to work into the front loops only so this is the back loop and this is the front loop these two stitches together make are these two loops together make one stitch but from that one stitch you have a front loop and you have a back loop and the front one is the one closest to you and the back one is the one furthest from you. So what we need to do is grab the front loop of this one and then grab the front loop of the next one and combine those to make one stitch. So we decrease. So insert your hook under just the front loop Okay, so I'm kind of like went in the center of it and then shift it over to insert under the front loop of the stitch that sits right beside it. So now I have those two loops on my hook and then you want to yarn over, pull through both of those in one motion. Now you have two loops on your hook can yarn over and pull through those two to complete a single crochet. And now you can see I decreased there. You can't even tell. You can't tell at all. So we're going to do that a few more times so you can get the hang of it. So Jessica says the way you are decreasing is that just because it says invisible decrease? Absolutely. There's other ways to decrease and usually it's just the um, it's to, just the standard way where you go like under this one. I don't want to show, I don't want to confuse people. So yeah, this is just it, invisible decrease is usually used for amigurumi. 
because uh, you want like a nice seamless um, look where you don't really see where you've, it all kind of goes, it's consistent throughout. You don't really see where you've decreased and where you've increased. So yes, you're right. That's that's not the standard way of doing it. It's kind of like the amigurumi way of doing it. Okay, so now I'm gonna do three single crochets. One, two, and three, because that's what my pattern tells me. And now I'm gonna do my invisible decrease. So remember you have your two loops. Here's one right here, and here's another one right here. Again, same thing with this. If you're having a lot of trouble with it, I would recommend starting with a nice smooth yarn where the stitches are very visible. Um, so you can practice that way before you move on to the textured yarn, okay? So I'm gonna insert my hook under the first loop of the first stitch, and then without yarning over, go directly to the next stitch, the first loop only. And now that I have those two loops on my hook, you just wanna yarn over and in one motion, pull through both of those. So now you have two loops on your hook. You can yarn over and pull through those two to complete the single crochet. Okay, now one, two, and three. Okay, now you're gonna go, same thing, invisible decrease. So insert under one loop, insert under the, front loop of the stitch that sits right beside it. Yarn over, pull through both of those loops. And then yarn over, pull through two loops. That's an invisible decrease. We're gonna do that all the way around, okay? So you can kind of get the hang of it. So you do one, two and three loops, I mean, three stitches, excuse me. Now, these two stitches, this one and this one, I wanna make into one stitch. So under the front loop of the first stitch and then under the front loop of the stitch right beside it, yarn over your hook, pull through both of those loops two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two. And that's another single crochet. So you see we made, that's now that's one single crochet. I worked into two stitches, but I, I only made one single crochet. So my stitch count will decrease. And you have to do it in this sort of, um, can't think of the word, but you have to do it in this way where you're decreasing incrementally, right? So that's what the pattern's for. You decrease incrementally, you increase incrementally, then you work even, and then you decrease incrementally. Okay, so one, two, three. And now for my invisible decrease, insert into the front loop of the next stitch, and then insert into the front loop of this next stitch that sits right beside it. So I'm going into two stitches, yarn over, pull through both of those loops, and yarn over, pull through two. So Sarah says, I just realized that my crochet is inside out. Yeah, that, that happens sometimes, and that means what you did was you, um, you, hopefully you were marking where you were ending. What happens, what, what happened was at some point, so see how I'm working around this, I'm going the same direction, right? I'm going the same direction around and around and around. At some point you probably put it down and then when you picked it back up, you started going this direction. You started like, okay, boop, 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 like that. So you just turned your work, which is what you're not supposed to do when you're working in continuous rounds. So you just have to figure out where you did that. So just start ripping back 
like to start gently pulling it back and then you'll and pay attention to what's happening and then you'll realize uh where where you kind of turned because it'll it'll start like go in the opposite direction if that makes sense so yeah that's all you did you want to always work from right to left around and around and around if you put it down it's very easy to pick it back up and just start working um, this way right so see how this is the outside of my work so this is going to be considered the right side and then this is the wrong side on the inside if you um hold uh, and yeah, I'll, I'll get back to that hold on a second so if you notice that your inside is like this that means you kind of went in the wrong direction. But if it's just like this, right? If you just kind of flipped it by accident, see if you can flip it back and then start going in the right direction. But more than likely you put it down and when you picked it back up, instead of going, instead of working around the outside, you started working around the inside, right? So just make sure, try to make sure this is your tail, try to make sure that's always on the inside and that you're working in this direction along the outer edge and not in this direction. See how if I was working like this, I'm kind of working um, on the inner edge, right? Like this way. But if I'm the right way, I'm working around the outer edge. If that makes sense, it's hard to explain. Okay, and next said, I don't have mark. Oh, okay, so if you don't have markers, just take a scrap piece of yarn and mark it with your scrap piece of yarn. So just go like this. That's my last stitch here. I'm just gonna put that yarn in there. Boom, you've marked it, okay? Just don't let it fall out. But yeah, you can always use a scrap piece of yarn if you don't have any markers. Okay, let's do a couple more um, invisible decreases. I hope that helps. I have many, many times um, when working in the round realized I was working at some point, I put it down and I just started to work in the wrong direction. It happens, it happens a lot. But once you get more familiar with it, you will just by looking at it, you'll realize um, what's the right side and what's the wrong side but it, it, it's hard to get used to until you've done it for a while okay so let's do let's see I have maybe one or two more invisible decreases so I'm going to go one two three I have that's my last invisible decrease because you see I've got two stitches left and that's what I want to decrease so, uh, so for this round, are we just doing decreases all around? Um, not really. So you're doing decreases incrementally all around according to the pattern. Okay. So if it says like, let's say we were, we were, I skipped because we don't have time to do the whole thing. So I know it's confusing, but go by the pattern, of course. I just want to show you all the techniques because all the techniques are the same for each round. Um, it's just the stitch counts are different, of course, for each round because you're doing it incrementally. So for round 22, um, we did single crochet in the next three single crochets, and then we did an invisible decrease, okay? And then at this point, it gives you a little semicolon, and this is standard for crochet patterns. So if you're, uh, if you need some help with that, like, like if you're not familiar with that, this is standard like wording, okay? It'll give you a little star and it'll say single crochet in the next three single crochets and then invisible decrease, semicolon, repeat from star around. That's just the way it's worded. So all what that's telling me is that I have a pattern repeat which goes from the star to the semicolon, okay? And then I wanna repeat that repeat. So, so let's say you're making it like a giant pillow. The pattern's not gonna tell you do it. Like, like sometimes it'll say do it 10 times or do it 11 times. 
but it's easier just to say, do that around because you don't want to have to count. Okay. Now I did this pattern repeat once I did it twice. Cause sometimes you're doing it like 50 times. So it's, you're just going to do that same repeat around and around and around. So this chunk of instruction, do that over and over and over and over and over. And each time you do it, you should consume um, the same number of stitches, right? So in this, if I single crochet in three stitches and then I invisible decrease, remember that's two stitches that I'm starting with, that gives me five stitches. So it should go, I've worked the pattern over these five stitches, over the next five stitches, over the next five stitches. So you should be consuming the same number of stitches with each pattern repeat. And in this case, we're decreasing. So once we made those two stitches into one, um, you will end up with a, with a lower stitch count than the previous round because we're decreasing. Um, if that makes, hopefully that makes sense. It's very sort of mathy. Um, let's see, I think I've turned mine a few times. Um, I'm trying to first with scrap yarn. Yeah, it takes time, it takes time. But you'll see, it'll just click. Like once you do it a few times, it'll just click for you. Um, and just try to see that you're working along the outside. That might help. But once you put it down, it gets like disoriented. Like which, like which way am I working? But yeah, you're always working from, from right to left. So if it's looking kind of funky, just start over again. Just start totally over. We haven't got through too much, so. You know, it never hurts to start over. Okay, so I have my last two stitches. I'm just going to do that last invisible decrease. So you go through the first loop of the next stitch, and then not first loop, front loop, and then the front loop of the of the stitch right beside it. Okay, yarn over, pull through both of those in one motion, and then yarn over pull through two to make my last decrease. So now if I counted at the end of each round, which I recommend you count at the end of each round, um, make sure you have the right number of stitches. Because once you mess up your stitch count, you have to, like the whole thing's gonna be messed up from that point on. So pull back to where you need to be. So uh, to where your stitch count is correct. So let's say this is my last stitch here, right? So what I want to do, if I want to, if I, if I, if I counted this, I'm like, oh, this is messed up. Like I messed up somewhere. What I would do is just pull out that first one and then put the marker back in the last stitch where I have this yarn marker that I made and then pull it back. Just take this and pull those stitches out. Just rip it back and rip it back and rip it back until you get back to the marked stitch. It's harder to rip back with the chenille. Remember, it's much easier with, with smooth yarn. Okay, rip back this one. So this is just if you screwed up somewhere. You don't have to do this if you're on the right track. Okay, so now I'm back at that marked stitch. So I ripped back a whole round and now I would count again to see um, if I have the right number of stitches in this round. So, okay, so then if you count again and you're still off, you wanna do that again. Rip it back another round, just rip it back as much as you need to. If the whole thing's messed up, just start over again. Now, if you don't remember what round you're on, you can count your rounds too. So let's say I, I'm like, oh, I have no idea what round I'm on. There's two ways you can figure it out. You can count the stitches and look at your pattern and say, okay, well, I have 24 stitches. That means I must have been on round four. Or you can count them. So this is where we made the magic ring. And then I worked six stitches into there. And then here's another round. So that's round two. Here's another round. That's round three, four, five six. So that'll tell me which round I've ended up on. Okay. It's just like some troubleshooting. Let's make, oh, let me show you how to stuff this real quick. Cause we're getting, we're running over oh, like almost out of time. You guys, should it look similar to yours? Even if using worsted what yarn, like a little stiffer, um, it should be 
Uh, I wouldn't say it should be stiffer or flimsier. If it's flimsier, you might want to use a smaller hook, and tighten up your gauge a little bit. If it's too stiff where you're having trouble, like you, like it's hurting your hands, then you want to use a bit of, use an, a larger hook. So go up a hook size. Um, but yeah, it should be, it should kind of have this sort of shape, right? It shouldn't be, like I said before, if it ruffles on the edges, you have too many stitches. If it starts to like look like a cone before it's supposed to start to look like a cone, then you have um, too, too few stitches. Oh, okay, so this is what I wanna show you. I wanna show you what, what I did here. So I started, this is my body. I did the bottom, I did the work even, and then I started decreasing here. And then what I wanna do at this point is stuff it. So I took this piece to, up to round 21. So I worked this body all the way up to around 21 where it says begin stuffing the body. So at this point is where you wanna start stuffing it because you need to leave room to close it up, right? What if mine is much bigger than yours? That's fine if it's much bigger, um, if you're using bigger yarn, but you're probably not uh, working, like you probably need to tighten up your gauge a little bit. So I would say go down a hook size. If, there's a, if you're using this yarn and it's way, way bigger. Yeah, so, you're, so you should go um, down a hook size if you think it looks too like sort of flimsy. What if, okay, I'm on round eight and it's not curling. Okay, good. So if it's in, if you're on round eight and you have a nice flat circle, that's exactly what you should have. You shouldn't start curling up until you stop increasing, which is on round 11. So if you have a flat circle, you're, you're on, and all your, you have the right number of stitches, you're totally on the right track. This is my, you can see it in here. I hope you guys can see me. This is just my, um, Fiber fill kind of stuff, classic fiber fill. It's just your stuffing. And I got the Loops and Threads brand at Michael's. Now I have my little hole, so I just want to stuff the stuffing in there. Because I want to, okay, thank you. I'm going to go down a hook size. Yeah, you want your stitches for amigurumi, not for sweaters, not for sweaters, not for hats. But for amigurumi, you want your stitches really tight. You want to go down a hook size. You want to be smaller than what the yarn recommends. So I don't usually go by um, the hook on my yarn label. I will start with the hook that the pattern recommends and check my gauge. And if I'm not getting the right gauge, I'll adjust it from there. So I'll either go up or down hook size until I get the correct gauge. For amigurumi, the gauge is not as important as if you're making a sweater or a hat or gloves, but it is, um, but it does need to be a bit tighter than you would normally make your stitches for like a blanket or something. Can you tell us how to close and fasten off? Yeah. So the bunny is going to take a few hours to make, um, depending on how quick you are. I can't say exactly how, how many hours, but I don't know, maybe, maybe two or three if you're quick. What I'm gonna do here is do some invisible decreasing quickly so you can see how to close it up. I am on, so I did begin stopping the body. Let's say I'm on round 22, single crochet in the next three. Oh, I gotta make sure I mark this because I will totally forget where the end of my round is if I don't have it marked. Single crochet in the next three. One, two, three, and then invisible decrease. And it gets a little tricky to um, work around where you, when you have all this stuffing in here. It gets like tighter, everything kind of tightens up. One, two, three, invisible decrease. One, two, three, invisible decrease. And when you're doing the invisible decrease into one that you've decreased around before, 
it's hard to find that front loop. So you just have to, if you can't find, there it is. If you can't find it, you can go into the back one. Okay, so one, two, three, and then invisible decrease again. Okay, and then I just keep doing that around. So what will happen is as I'm working rounds 22, 23, and 24, I want to, this hole is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. And then you want to make sure that you have it stuffed the way you want, because once you close it, um, you know, you, you don't want to have to open it back up. So stuff it so it's like, so just move it around, make sure you've got the stuffing like nice and the shape that you want it. And then you keep working those rounds. As you work those rounds, it's going to get tighter and tighter. So it's going to be kind of hard to maneuver, um, you know, just do it slowly. And then it will be to where the hole is like this, like really small, and it'll only have uh, six single crochets. So what we're going to do is you'll decrease around until all these stitches are consumed and only and you only have six single crochets. And once you only have six single crochets in that round, it's going to be like about this small. So you'll just take the yarn tail, put it on a needle, and close it up, right? So let me show you. I have a this is a paw that I made. So let's say this is the top and this is how small the hole is because I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have eight here, but it should, it's going to be six on the body. So let's say this is the top. You're going to take your yarn here. If I can fit it on this yarn needle, just thread it through. Okay, and then you're going to go through one right beside it, and then the next one. Well, so you just kind of sew it closed, basically. And then I go through this one here, and this one here, pull it. See, it's like basically closed already. I don't even really have to go through those last two. So you just sew it closed. That's how you close it and boom, it's closed. So that's what'll happen. You'll keep decreasing until you only have six stitches left. And then you just sew those six stitches together um, and it'll just look like that. It won't, you won't even see it, okay? So that's how you close it. The ears, and I know we don't have time to go through it, but I'm gonna show you this so you can see what you're gonna be working with. This is the paw and this is the ear. The ear started out the same way as the body, where we started with the magic ring and then the six single crochet. We increased a little bit, we worked even a little bit, and then we decreased a little bit, okay? And then what I did with the ear is I just took a little bit of stuffing and I just put it right at this top part, just a little bit so it kind of has like, so it's a little floppy. Um, if you, you know, if you want them like, standing up straight like that. You can just put stuffing through the whole thing. But if you just want it floppy ears, just put a little bit at the top. And then I just sewed those ears onto the top of the head. Now, I did the same thing with the paws. I stuffed those a little bit, and then I sewed those onto the bottom. If you have some pins, it'll you can take your pins and mark where you want to sew on your pieces. And that way you don't have them like lopsided. So mark them first, make sure they look good. And then once they look good, um, sew them on. A few more things I want to tell you before we head out. You see how I did these paws? I feel like they look a little too, I don't know. I just don't like how they look. So what you can do is don't stuff the paws. So if you can see with the fox, I didn't stuff them and I think they look a little bit cuter like that. So that's up to you. You can either stuff them or un not stuff them. They'll just have a little bit of a different look. Um, when you sew these pieces on, you may have trouble with the yarn coming apart. So if you want to use, like let's say I wanna use this yarn tail 
and I want to sew my you're welcome sorry I'm going over Amy I know you if you probably if you have to go I totally understand <laughs> um but yeah you can always catch the the replay if you miss the end or whatever um let's say I'm sewing my my ear on here what happens when I start to sew it let's just grab a stitch here grab a stitch here when I pull this one through sometimes those little fluffies will just start flying off everywhere it's not doing it right now of course but sometimes oh, there see a little bit came off because it's doing that thing where I was explaining before where where you're pulling it through the fluffies like to come up so what you can do is just take and find a yarn that you have that's a nice smooth worsted weight yarn and um, that kind of matches the color and sew it on with the worsted weight yarn. If you're if you're trying to sew it with this and it's offline everywhere, just use a different um, yarn to sew it on with. It will get hidden among the stitches so you won't see it anyway. Try to match the color, but if you don't have a total match, um, you won't really see the, you know, this the stitches what, that you've seamed. Last thing I did was I did the eyes and I always do my face after it's stuffed. Um, that's just how I do it. You can do it the eyes with a smoother weight yarn, but if you're feeling more adventurous, you can do the eyes with the chenille yarn and the nose. So you're just gonna mark where you want them to be. You're gonna come in from the back here. So I just go in with my needle through the back and then basically embroider it. So go back in and then go back in, go back in there and then go back in there and do the same thing with the eyes. You can do it all in kind of one, um, like, you know, strand of yarn or you can split it up. But this takes time to, to kind of learn too. So you might have to practice a little bit um, I find it a bit tricky. So if you have trouble with doing the embroidery, you could always use like felt eyes or you could use like um, safety eyes or you could just crochet a little round with smooth yarn and then sew that on and make the eyes. So yeah, that's the last part is just putting that little bit of embroidery on, okay? But I know we had to kind of rush through the back of it because we ran out of time, but I don't wanna keep you guys all day. So um, I know it's a lot to get through too. So if you need to just go ahead and watch the replay on YouTube, the free pattern is there. Um, I knew and I'm confused to you do the eyes on the outside. No, what, what you do, the eyes are really tricky. So if you have trouble with it, like I said, just like you could use some, get another needle, use some felt eyes. Um, or you can just crochet a circle and use that. But if you go on YouTube, people make some really beautiful things with eyes, like lots and lots of detail. I think it just takes practice, but the way I do it, and there's more than one way to do it, is I come in through the back like this. So I put my little marker. That's where I want my eye to be. And then I come in through like the, anywhere. You can go in through anywhere. It doesn't really matter. Like from here, because this part's going to be hidden. Only this part's going to show. Come in. And then you do, I forget how I did this one. Okay, so then you go up here. So just put like a, like an angle. And then when you go in, you want to come back out right here. So you have like a, well, it's like on a diagonal. So then you come back out here. Okay. And then go back in this way. And you have to sort of figure out where you want to come out because let's say I want to make an eyelash here. So I'm going to come out right around here. This is why it's helpful to mark it. So you know where you want your eyelash to be. Okay. And then I just go back in here to make this eyelash. And let's say I come out around here. It takes some practice. And then go back in this way. Now let's say that's a kind of a funky looking eyelash. 
So I might do that again. So I would just go back and start over, but let's say that that's perfect. And then I'm finished, okay? So I'm gonna go right back in here. And then I'm just gonna take this yarn tail out wherever, like here. See how the fuzz comes apart, okay? Now look, there's my eyelash. And now these two pieces, I'm just gonna cut these right off and just shove them into the piece and they're, they're gone. So I started here and I ended here. And this part is just embroidery and it takes some practice. So if you're really, really new and you don't feel like dealing with that, it took me a while to, fix, to learn how to do it and I don't love it. I feel like it's a little tedious. So if you don't love it, people use like really cute felt eyes, safety eyes, um, a little round crochet circle, you could do that too. But if you like these eyes, that's how you do it. You just come in from the back, do that, and then you do, it's like a few movements. Um, so you could practice on just a nice flat piece, just practice till you get it the way you want, okay? I see, but those can be pulled out pretty easily. Don't they need to be knotted in? No, th that will never come out. You don't have to knot that in. So that's why if you start all the way in the back, uh, I mean, unless somebody is taking something and digging in there, so that's why if you start all the way out in the back, um, that's probably going to be a little bit safer, like start from here and then come all the way in. But once that yarn is in there, it gets tangled in all, all that stuffing and everything else, it's not going to come out. It won't come out. Um, but if you really don't like that, like I said, I guess you could knot it at some point. Um, I wouldn't, I don't think it's gonna come out. I really don't, but yeah, <laughs> I'm trying to think. I think you, I think it probably will be okay. If you wanna try, you can try um, like with before it's stuffed, when you still open, you can mark your eyes. And then do that, what we just did with the embroidery, and then knot it in there before everything's stuffed up. If that, if you want to try that, um, you can do that too. I've never had trouble with it coming out, but if you if it's like for a little kid and you feel like they're going to be pulling on it and stuff, you can always do it that way too. If you prefer to have it knotted, just do it before you have everything stuffed. Start um, you know, start here and then do the same thing and then tie some knots so it's nice and secure. Okay, you guys, thank you so much for staying over with me. Sorry we went over um, a little bit longer, but I know it's so much to go through. Go ahead and watch the replay, get the free patterns, watch the other ones too. We had the fox and the check, watch all those. Practice, practice, practice with your um, smooth yarn first before you start with the chenille. And then join me in two more weeks for the koala. And I hope everyone has a great um, rest of your weekend. Thanks guys. See you next time.